the exclusive interview of Arise News with the presidential candidate of the People's Democratic Party, Atiku Abubakar, is still generating reactions across the country. Following a tweet by Atiku on the collapsed national greed, the presidential candidate of the African Action Congress, AAC, Omoyele Shoure, took a swipe on Atiku, saying the former vice president was part of the power crisis facing the nation. But in the exclusive interview, Atiku said Shoure uh, does not understand what the issues are in the power sector. He has all along lived outside this country. He doesn't even know uh, the policy <clears throat> implementation or even the policy initiative. We started to, ex when we came in, uh, the total generation was about 4,000 megawatts. We initiated the building of nine additional power stations, nine. And by the time uh, those nine were finished, you know, the capacity has gone up from uh, four to about 13,000 megawatts. Unfortunately, no correspondent uh, increase as far as the transmission lines are concerned. There is, there is no way when your transmission lines cannot evacuate the power you are producing that they will not collapse. So they keep on collapsing. And these uh, additional uh, nine power stations were completed by Jonathan. Umaru, who was on it, uh, he died, and Jonathan continued, and he completed them. So that's why any time there is an increase in the uh, power generation, and then you have a transmission uh, system uh, that cannot evacuate the power, there will be a collapse. So he doesn't even know, because he lives outside this country. He comes every four years and contests for the presidency and goes back. He fails and goes back again. So what does show already know about this country? Nothing, absolutely nothing. All right, we have uh, in the studios the presidential candidate of the African Action Congress, AAC, Omoyele Shoure, to look at the issues raised by the PDP presidential uh, candidate in that exclusive interview, Arise News had with him. Very warm welcome, Shoure. Thank you. You are a diaspora now, you know, you only come in uh, once in four years and you don't... <laughs> Uh, seem to be abreast with the issues of power, particularly when uh, the former vice president uh, was uh, in government for eight years, 1999 to 2007. How do you react to this? 2003. Where he was? Uh, 2000, yeah. Uh, he mixed up a number of things, and I think it is because uh, he is losing memory. Otherwise, he would have known that uh, I've never, at any point in time in my life, left issues concerning Nigeria. In fact, for him and others, I was a source of news while they were in office, happenings in, their, in, in, the, in the government. In, in fact, when Garba Shell used to work with him as an essay, he used to send me documents from their side. I'm revealing it for the first time. So as to counter Obasanjo in those days at each other's neck. And he also said that they increased electricity during their period from 4,000 megawatts to 13,000 megawatts. That is not true. The highest Nigeria ever had is 13,000 megawatts. And that was, that was done over the period of 16 to now 20 years that they've been in power. During their period, the highest was 7,500 megawatts. And the available megawatts for the public was 3,000. When Umar Yaradra came, he pushed it to about 9,500 9, megawatts before he died. He's, he's right that some other developments happened. And Jonathan completed their project, and they went to 12,000 12, 12, megawatts. And Buhari, in his seven years, only added 1,000 megawatts. But all along these periods, only Nigeria only had available 5,500 megawatts. Till today, it has now collapsed to about 2,500 megawatts. So who builds and generates electricity without corresponding distribution or transmission? That is where they get it wrong. So you can't be telling me that, oh, we just built all this electricity, but we don't have you know, transmission lines to, to evacuate, evacuate them. Does that make sense? This is why I said these guys have no business in government. It is time for them to quit, to retire. 
and even face consequences of the darkness they brought into this country. But my question to him, which he did not answer, was that you guys spent $16 billion to generate and procure darkness for Nigerians. He couldn't answer that. He then started talking about the fact that I come to contest every four, four years and go back. My first time contesting in Nigeria was in 2019. I have not left since then. I have not left. I've been here since that time. But he has left each time he contested. This is going to be his seventh time contesting. I started contesting in 1992 as a student union president. Atiku also contested during the SDP primaries against Abiola mm -hmm. in 1992-1993 transition period. He lost. I won as a student union president. <laughs> when the system collapsed, it was us that took over and made sure that we fought for that uh, mandate. Atiku ran away. I don't know where he was between year 1993 and 1999, but he never left Nigeria. Each time he contests election, he leaves. One time, if his memory will serve him right, I met him at, a mansion, at his mansion in Pot Potomac, near Washington, D.C. It turns out that uh, it was a place they were using for money laundering. When it was discovered, they ran away with his wife. He didn't go back to the U.S., he moved to the U.K., then I heard they had an island <coughs> in Italy. Well, those are hefty allegations. We're not no, 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 this is, this is election season. People, yeah. no, no, it's not character assassination. Mm -hmm. This is election season. I'm a candidate, he's a candidate. Absolutely. He called um, Tinumbu to come for an interview, one hour interview. I'm inviting all of them for a one hour interview. Obi, Atiku, and Tinumbu. Let us test their records. That window is going to open from Absolutely. September 28th. When, 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 when campaigning. No, 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 that's no. Campaigning is different well, so from yeah, let, engagement. Let, let, let's yeah, talk saying, about the yeah. issues here. At the end of the day, as it stands right now, Nigeria has spent over 11 trillion naira looking at getting electricity into the homes of the people. Yet, yes. We are still in perpetual darkness. This year alone, this over a half a problem. dozen times, the national grid has collapsed. So yes. let's say, for instance, you get elected as president. Yeah. How would you handle the situation differently mm. from what is obtainable at the moment? Before I answer that, between 2010 and 2022, the national grid has collapsed 209 times. Mm. So it was why I was upset when he was talking about collapse. In 2020, you guys have been collapsing the national grid since you have been in power in 2020, I mean, 1999 till now. So to my own solution, you see, I have done my homework to discover that when you spend $70 million, you are capable of erecting over 20,000, I mean, 2,000 kilometers of transmission. Of transmission. And that's the amount of money we are going to spend to repair the National Assembly. So if you spend $16 billion, you are capable of providing transmission all over West Africa. So generating electricity now requires a lot of technological understanding of how the world works. It has to be an energy mix. So we can easily, in the next four years that we will be in power, starting from 2023, add additional 20, 16 to 20,000 megawatts of electricity through gas-fired. Most of these uh, gas-fired plants that they built don't have supplies. I have records here so showing, you, the, so showing that Egmi, Egmi has the capacity to generate 1,100 1, megawatts of electricity. It's doing 606. Sapele has the capability to generate 1,080 1, megawatts of electricity is doing less than 200. So when you fire all those plants, you get additional megawatts. You make it up to 13,000. When we do solar, which is now one of the most popular, and it's talking about also energy transition because we can't continue to rely on these old methods. Uh, solar, you can solar, solar isn't going to work for, you know, the manufacturers and the no, rest. No, it's, it's the same to, source. No, to, no, it will work their, for, to power their it heavy will work for, equipment. It will work for right? everybody. I think, I think what is needed it will here, work for what everybody. Nigerians want to know, yes. is that we have all the generating plants, particularly yes. the gas plant ones, you know, apart from Egme and the Sapele and of Gorode. And they are Gorode. all privately owned. And the government only handles transmission. Uh, no, no, it's not the, all the, of them it, that are privately owned. It's the owned. issue of government gas here yeah, I want you to, you know, address. Yeah. How are you going to uh, 
when there is no gas, there can't be there any There is power. gas. Mm. Mm. The problem is that they built power plants because of corruption. They didn't build gas, by, I mean, gas pipelines. That would this take government gas. Is, is building the uh, KKK. Mm -hmm. Well, has it helped anybody? It's, 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 yeah, it's, it's, while it's, it's why we are two thousand, why we are two thousand uh, uh, two hundred megawatts of electricity? We're asking you so that, 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 that because that you took the argument from me, you took the argument. I'm telling you that they, they have not done the right things, and these guys have no idea how to get it right. And I was trying to tell you, you are telling me that solar cannot power industries. Of course, it can power industries. It's the same type of electricity. There's no difference between the electricity generated through hydro gas or solar. It's just a matter of assembling and putting uh, solar um, uh, farm, farms mm. in all the... They are doing it in uh, Morocco. You know, Morocco is selling power, not only to Moroccans, but they're selling to uh, Malta and part of France. And, this, and they come from this energy mix we're talking about. Gas, solar. There's coal in Enugu. There's now you know, uh, clean coal technology that can help us generate electricity in Enugu for a huge amount of land space, like probably the whole of the southeastern part of Nigeria. And if you now provide gas, not only through the pipelines, in the meantime, by the way, there are other means of transporting gas to, you know, to these uh, facilities that can be done, but it requires security. Don't let anybody lie which to you about Which is another major exactly. issue, Exactly. So you are not going to be, you cannot line up trucks of gas to Omotosho or anywhere, oh, when Giregu, yes, or Giregu, everywhere that they have gas uh, plants now, without security, otherwise kidnappers, bandits will just take over this this project. Over a thousand seven hundred people in the first quarter of twenty twenty two lost their lives due to insecurity. If you add of tonight, it's you know, still in a Kassina, major, still a major, major issue. Talking. No country can progress without security. That's right. What do you think this administration is not doing right that you will correct if given an opportunity to? If they say it, they'll find you. They, we don't have a commander in chief of the armed forces. No, you don't say that because I'm telling constitutionally you, we have one. We have it constitutionally. I mean, democratically we, we have one. But we don't have so it on the you field. Say that, yeah. You know, we don't have people who can command the respect of our armed forces who have the understanding of how the armed forces should be curtailing the security challenge. That's, we have. So we are indicting our military? Are, that's a former military? general. You are, are you indicting the military with the yeoman's of, job they've been doing? Of course. I have, you are asking me what I want to do. I am not supposed to come here and lie to the Nigerian public that we have a military leadership that is capable of waging war against insecurity. That is the truth. And I've been a media person like most of you. I've covered these things, we've exposed all these things, but people ignore them. Now, we are all faced with the failure of a military we've been chosen over should, the years. What, what should they be doing, very quickly? Well, what should they be doing? I, when I was here last time, I told you that short term, immediately, uh, what needs to be done. And that is to continue to change the leadership of the military units in the country until we get it right. Right? That's part of the short term. Part of the short term also is to look at how we can bring in collaboration. At this point, this is beyond us. If I have my way, at this, the first thing I'll do is bring in collaboration. If it means that you bring in mercenaries, mm. I will bring it in so as to stem the tide of the movement of these groups okay. that are threatening the entire country. Omo Yele Showore, the presidential candidate of the Action, uh, that's African Action Congress. Thank you so much for joining us tonight on the program. Bringing.